Hey, this is Coach Luca. We're here at the Kettlebell Club. I'm gonna show you how to perform the windmill. The windmill is a blend of flexibility, mobility, and stability, also strength. So in order to do it, you wanna make sure that you have some good overhead range of motion. Not to mention the hips and T-spine rotation. I'm gonna show you the do's and don'ts of this very important lift. Not only does the windmill work the overhead stability position, but it also works the midsection very strongly. The windmill is not just a hinging motion, but it's also a rotation of the T-spine. It's a great stretch, but also it works your stability and strength in a very unique way. So it'll improve it, but also you wanna make sure that you do have this overhead prerequisite. Now there's a few common mistakes that I see happening that people do in a windmill. It's not exactly the correct way. So first mistake is people go way too wide with their feet. It's actually quite a narrow stance. The second mistake people do is they think of just bending at the hip only or going into a, a bending pattern. You don't wanna do this. You wanna hinge your hips, but also go into a rotation. And let me demonstrate the correct way. So first is establishing a baseline for your windmill, just body weight. And the best way to do this is just get used to performing a hip hinge. And do your hinge a few times. I'm gonna hinge my hips, and from here I'm gonna rotate my spine. If you want to add a reach, you can. So the first part is you want to have your feet in a certain position. Specifically, you're going to have them parallel, hip width. And to begin your windmill, you're going to angle them to a 45 degree angle to the side. So I'm going to go towards my left, like so. This means that I'm gonna be hinging behind me towards my right hip. This is gonna be the one I'm gonna be leaning on and you're gonna stretch in my piriformis muscle. So when I begin my movement, I'm gonna raise my arm as if I'm holding on to a weight or my kettlebell. My other hand is gonna be on my hip. So as when I go down, my forearm will stop me at my thigh for the adequate depth. The other part is the position of my chest, where it's facing. So if you can see my shield, when I go into my windmill, when I start my windmill, it's facing forward. And when I finish my windmill, it's gonna be facing in this direction. One more time. So I'm gonna position myself here so you can see the difference. I'm facing to the side, and when I finish, I'm gonna be facing the camera. So as you can tell, there's a rotation happening at my T-spine, this is very important. It's a hinge, as well as a T-spine rotation. If you have trouble with your windmill, there's a few things you wanna work on. One would definitely be your T-spine rotation. So do some stretches like the bretzel, uh, the rib pull, anything that will open up your T-spine in terms of helping you rotate better. The other thing is hip mobility. So work on your hinges, uh, stretch your hamstrings, also uh, your calf, if they're tight, it could also impede you from your windmills. Here are some great stretches you can do which combine the windmill, but more of a stretch. So you're going to cross your legs over like this and hinge your hips. From the side. And this is gonna work, it's gonna stretch one leg at a time 
and it's gonna feel easier when you practice your windmills. I wanna show you a great stretch for your T-spine while doing the windmill. It's gonna help to improve your kettlebell overhead position. So you're gonna position one hand on your hip like this, and the other hand's gonna be behind your head. I'm gonna place my feet, I'm gonna hinge and rotate, and end up over here. So I'm gonna use my elbow, and I'm gonna reach back. I'm gonna come in a little bit, breathe in, and exhale, reach back. I'm gonna squeeze my armpit, so my lats. I'm gonna tighten them up. And then exhale, and I try to go back a little bit more. I contract my lats, I flex, and as I exhale, I try to reach back a little bit more. And you could do a few rotations here. Imagine you're pushing into something behind you, opening up. I come up and I relax and I do the other side. This other arm, it's very important because it helps me support and rest. Basically, I can just rest there as I'm going down into the move. This arm acts as support so I can focus on the stretch and the contract and relax technique. Try it. So when you're doing your windmill, I want you to do three things. First is you're gonna use your strength. Use your whole body, all your muscles. Second thing is I want you to create space within. Visualize it in your mind. Third thing is you're gonna imagine you're also spreading that load everywhere throughout your body, all right? So not just using one area, but everything at the same time. I want you to think of different lines of pulls. So as you're pushing your hips back, you're trying to lengthen. Imagine that there's a line going from your hip all the way from the top of your head. So it goes like this. So a line from here all the way to the top and the line is getting longer and longer, right? Try to visualize that, that you're lengthening, okay? So those points are spreading apart. I also want you to visualize your collarbone, your shoulders, and your arm is also getting longer at the same time. So it's gonna end up almost like a triangle and visualize that tri triangle in your mind. So you have point one is your hip, point two is your head, Point three is the top of your arm and your collarbone, kind of like a line going down the middle of the triangle. So it's gonna look like this. As I push back, this is your triangle position. Visualize those lines and think it's one solid piece like a bridge. Another common mistake in the windmill is people bending their, uh, their knees too much. So the back leg should remain straight this is important because we're gonna be emphasizing this, this side, stretching it and getting a hamstring and glutes. The front leg is more as a support. You could say like a kickstand. So it's okay to have it bent. You can either have your arm as mentioned over here, but as you go down, you can also have it where you're pushing into your leg, like so, at the same time. So I'm pushing into my thigh to help it keep it straight. Now there's three types of windmills. There's the high windmill with the kettlebell up above over my head. There's the low windmill with the kettlebell at my foot. And there's the double kettlebell, the low and high combination with two belts at the same time. So for the low windmill, you wanna have the kettlebell right up against your supporting foot. When I do my hinge motion, my arm is gonna be reaching down for the handle. So it's gonna slide down my leg at the same time. I'm gonna grip the handle and it comes straight up. Another tip for the low windmill is sometimes you do not have the mobility or the range of motion to go very deep. 
The important part is maintaining your spinal alignment. We're going into rotation, but we're not bending the spine to reach further down. So lengthen your spine and don't compromise to get that extra depth. You can start at the top rather than trying to pick up the kettlebell like a deadlift. So I would do a one arm deadlift. Position myself for my windmill. And just do partial range of motion or as deep as you can go. And this is a great way for beginners to practice the windmill without having to compromise their safety. Now we're gonna do the high windmill, which is the kettlebell overhead. So like as mentioned in the beginning, you need that overhead mobility. So hopefully you've done a lot of Turkish get-ups before and you've been practicing your presses and your snatches. So you should be there already. To get it up overhead, you do it any safe way you can. You can do a snatch or a press, you choose. Same position, angle my feet, hand on my hip. Show you from the side. The most advanced variation is the double windmill. I'm gonna have one low and one high. Get your kettlebell overhead first. Position your feet, opposite leg next to the bell. This feels like a combination of a deadlift and a get up all in one. So I love this exercise, the windmill. It's a great exercise, but it's not for beginners. You have to have mastered a strong overhead position and you must have great T-spine mobility and also hips. So you have to be flexible steel. You can include it in your training as part of a warm up because it does activate your whole body and it does it's like lo loaded mobility pretty much it's a stretch as well as it will strengthen you so you can pretty much include it wherever you want you can do it on variety days after your you know day off from your training or include it as part of your warm-up enjoy being flexible steel with the windmill <laughs>